Hello, First Baptist Brackton and family. Happy Sunday morning to you. Amen. We're still at home. We're still being safe. But God has fixed it so we can gather together through this platform. Amen. You see me with my mask on. And we're wearing it every time we go out of the house. We're keeping it on in restaurants unless you're up and moving around, especially when you're up and moving around. So make sure you have your mask all the time. Protect yourself and protect others. Folk are getting sick. Folk of all ages, for you young people that are listening, young folk are dying from COVID. Amen. We want you to stay healthy, stay safe, listen to the doctors, not the politicians. Amen. We miss you. We miss seeing you. Uh, Mrs. Akins and I are going to drive around now, see if we can see some folk uh, and, and just look at you and say hello. Please don't run up and hug us. We want to hug you too, but not right now, okay? So just wave at us from a distance. We love you so much. We miss you so much. God's going to fix it so we can come back together and we will really appreciate each other. But until then, you're staying home. You're staying healthy you're staying safe ready for a word cj and the praise team going to kick it off okay god's got a word for you today what an awesome god we serve pastor loves you Praise the Lord, Bracktown family and friends. Here we are again, another opportunity God has given us to worship him in spirit and in truth. Listen, this morning, I want to know, do I have any blessed people out there watching us on today? If you're blessed, wherever you are, I want you to put your hands together and give God praise. We're going to sing this little old Clay Evans tune. It simply says, I'm blessed. Come on. Come on, praise him, let's sing it, say, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Truly blessed. Truly blessed. I've got legs to walk, and i got a voice to talk. Thank God I'm blessed. Thank God I'm blessed. Hey, hey. I'm blessed. I want to sleep. Come on, let's sing it one more time. Come on, say, I am blessed. I'm blessed. I'm truly blessed. Truly blessed. I've got my health and I've got my strength. Thank God I'm blessed. Thank God. Put your hands together, everybody. I like this verse. It simply says, if you want to see a miracle, all you got to do is just look at me. I've been blessed. I've been kept by goodness and mercy. I've got victory. So before you start to complain, you are to count your blessings. You'll be amazed. I won't complain. I won't complain. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Can I say that verse one more time? Yeah. Listen. If you want to see a miracle, all you got to do is just look at me. Just look at me. Listen. I've been blessed. I've been kept by and mercy, I've got the victory. Hey, hey, before you start to complain, you ought to count your blessings. You'll be amazed. I won't complain. I won't complain. Hey, I'm blessed. 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 You ought to find you a neighbor and tell him I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in the city. I'm blessed. And I'm blessed in the field. I'm blessed. I'm blessed in my going out. I'm blessed. 
and I'm blessed in my coming in. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed on a Monday. I'm blessed. Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday. I'm blessed. Friday, Saturday, Sunday. the same for you. I thank God for Jesus for sending his son to die on the cross so I wouldn't be lost. Faithfulness towards me morning by morning. New mercies I see. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Anybody know that you're blessed? Anybody know that you're blessed? I could have been dead, sleeping in my grave, but you told old death to stay back and behave. They said I wouldn't make it. They said I wouldn't be here today. So when you look at me, I'm a blessed man. When you look at me, I'm a kept man. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. You want to find you a neighbor? Shake him and rock him. Rock him and shake him. Anybody know that you're blessed? Anybody know that you're blessed? Did he wake you up this morning? Did he start you on your way? Did he put food on your table? I know God is able. I'm trying to leave it alone. But when I think of the goodness, the goodness of Jesus, and all he's done for me, how he keeps making ways. How he keeps open doors. How he keeps looking out. Anybody know that you're blessed? Anybody know that you're blessed? Let me see you wave your hand. If you know you're blessed. Let me see you wave your hand. If you know you're blessed. Come on, any blessed folks out there? Let me hear you say yeah! Say it one more time. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I don't look like what I've been through. The devil should have killed me when he thought he had me. It was no goodness of my own, but those twins called grace and mercy. Surely goodness and mercy. They keep following me. They keep following me. All the days of my life. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. Come on, do I have any blessed folks in the house? Come on, if you're truly blessed, send him a praise. If you're truly blessed, send him a praise. We're standing here because we're blessed. Throughout this pandemic, God keeps blessing us. He keeps making ways out of no ways. He keeps opening doors. So, Lord, we thank you for blessing us. So we give you all the glory. We give you all the praise. For there's nobody like you. And we came to lift you up. We came to magnify you. We came to glorify you. Come on, send up a praise. Oh, wait, you may. 
Oh, 
must be our testimony today it's nobody like Jesus amen our parents put it a little differently they said can't nobody do me like Jesus thank God for this praise team and for these musicians for our camera team and all of the Folk in the AV, we are delighted to come into your homes once again. It's offering time now. Amen. What a blessed time it is. God says to us, it's not a suggestion, it is a command to bring ye all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house and prove me now herewith, saith the Lord of hosts, if I will not open unto you the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that you shall not be able uh, to receive. We are unabashedly a tithing church. We know that it is more blessed to give than to receive. We know that you cannot be God giving. Amen. You've been so faithful during this pandemic and we are excited about your faithfulness. And we just believe that as a result of that faithfulness and God's goodness, that he's going to continue to bless us through these very difficult times. So we pray that you'll get on Secure Give and Cash App even now and give your weekly offering. Make sure that's W-E-E-K, not W-E-A-K. Amen. Give your weekly offering unto the Lord. Let's pray. God, how we thank you for the blessed privilege of giving. We acknowledge, Father, that what we give is already yours. It is more an act of faithfulness on our part, as we are but stewards over all you have entrusted in our hand. And God, we've learned that we don't give according to the net or the gross, but according to Acts chapter 5, verse 4, we give of everything that is in our power. We pray even now that you will bless all who shall give in these offerings and all who have a desire to do the same. Take what we bring to you, shake it together, press it down, multiply it, allow it to be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom in jesus name we pray amen 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 and amen all right so again today we are still in the first division of psalms psalm 27 the first division of psalms psalm 27 and I want to read that psalm. It's fairly brief in its entirety. And I'm reading from the King James Version. All right. First division of Psalm, Psalm 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? When the wicked, even mine enemies and my foes, came up on me to eat up my flesh, they stumbled and fell. Though an host should encamp against me, my heart shall not fear. Though war should rise against me, in this will I be confident. One thing have I desired of the Lord, that will I seek after, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord all the days of my life to behold the beauty of the Lord and to inquire in his temple. 
For in the time of trouble he shall hide me in his pavilion. In the secret of his tabernacle shall he hide me. He shall set me up upon a rock, and now shall mine head be lifted up above mine enemies round about me. Therefore will I offer in his tabernacle sacrifices of joy. I will sing, yea, I will sing praises unto the Lord. Hear, O Lord, when I cry with my voice. Have mercy also upon me and answer me. When thou saidst, seek ye my face, my heart said unto thee, thy face, Lord, will I seek. Hide not thy face far from me. Put not thy servant away in anger. Thou hast been my help. Leave me not, neither forsake me, O God of my salvation. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Teach me thy way, O Lord, and lead me in a plain path because of mine enemies. Deliver me not over unto the will of mine enemies, for false witnesses are risen up against me, and such as breathe out cruelty. I had fainted unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. Wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. Amen. Amen. I want to talk from the next little while from the question, is God really good all the time? Is God really good all the time? I am continuously amazed at how assessment depends on perspective. How we perceive something is very often determined by our vantage point. When I was young, I thought my mother and my Aunt Mary Ellen were tall. Turns out they were both barely five feet. I looked up to them as a child from a physical perspective but later learned to look up to them from a spiritual perspective. They were from a long line of strong black women who not only survived but thrived against seemingly overpowering odds. They raised us the best they could. They gave us all they had, taught us how to make it with God and a little there were do's and don'ts, but not much that was left to chance or choice. It was a day and a time when children were not allowed to make grown-up decisions, were not permitted to share in grown-up conversations, and had neither a voice nor a choice in certain things that were predetermined by those older and wiser than we to be in our own best interest. Now that we are grown, we can look back and see some of life's pitfalls we were saved from by not being allowed to make certain decisions or call certain shots. It was a day when church was not optional. The school teachers and the parent were on the same page in seeing to our educational attainment, and every adult in the neighborhood was treated with a level of respect, whether they were drunk or sober, related or not related, church leader or never darkened a church door. There were constants and non-negotiables, and the entire community was clear on what was permitted and what was not. Adults took responsibility, and children knew their role. Are you with me? Now, it's often hard to tell the parent from the child and the student from the teacher. In the business world, no one is quite sure anymore who the adults are in the room. Decision-making is now too often made on the basis of the frivolous and the non-essential. Pristine and pure seem to have been replaced with adulteration and contamination. 
thousands of people are dying every day and we're still arguing about wearing a mask. We can't focus on the real issues of life because we're constantly distracted by the trite and the trivial. Taking a mural out of UK is not as important as putting a system in place at UK that will keep our black employees from having to leave the university and our city in order to be promoted and reach their full potential. Some very inept executives have held their positions far too long without advancing the cause of those who were not born with fair skin and privileged by birth to excel beyond their competence. We must stay woke and keep our eye on the real prize of equity and justice. Just because it's shiny doesn't mean it's valuable. And by the way, let me go on record. Yes, I do want police reform. And those who refuse to reform need to find employment in another profession. But I also want people of color to stop killing each other. And before anyone bothers to offer the crabs in the bucket analogy, let me remind you that the bucket is not the natural habitat for the crabs. They act like they do because they've been forced into a foreign environment that is not conducive to their natural tendencies. When the crabs are on the rocks with the waves crashing in on them, which is their natural habitat, they don't pull each other down. They're known to reach down and pull other crabs up to save them from the crashing waves. I'm not offering excuses, but it could be, it, could it possibly be that the tidal wave of repressive racism that has resurfaced in our country and has been normalized from the highest position in the land has forced many marginalized people who were already vulnerable into an unnatural habitat that is not conducive to the strengthening and development of the weak, the worn, and the least prepared. Systemic systems and opulent oppressors uh, now feel free to say and do whatever they want without fear of reprisals or punishment. And until they are hit where it hurts, they will continue to give apathetic apologies and show remissful remorse with stoic consistency. In the words of Forrest Gump, that's all I got to say about that. Come on to the text. And let's hear the story of one who has been through the storm politically and domestically, and yet he is a portrait of unwavering of faith. For we are justified by faith, not by joy, peace, love, hope, or zeal. Confidence in God is the solution to the worst situation. David did not close his eyes to the circumstances around him, no. He looked by faith to the Lord and considered his circumstances from heaven's perspective. In leadership, we teach what is known as the Stockdale Paradox, which says we must never confuse faith that you will prevail in the end, which you can never afford to lose, with the discipline to confront the most brutal facts of your current reality, whatever that might be. So please stop telling folk you're too blessed to be stressed. That sounds good, but baby, it ain't true. Jesus was stressed in Gethsemane. Paul was stressed floating around on broken pieces of a ship. David was stressed while hiding from Saul in a cave. John was stressed while in exile on Patmos. Mama had stress. Daddy had stress. I've got stress. And if you ain't lying to yourself, you got some too. But the good news is, as a child of God, I'm stressed, but I'm not distressed. Amen, somebody. The Lord was everything to David. And so he is everything we need now. In these dark and benighted days, the Lord is still our light. And you ought to mark this passage because it is the first time in Scripture that light is used as a metaphor for God. 
The secret of David's public confidence is his private obedience. He took time to fellowship with his God and get directions uh, from him. At the time of our text, David was living in the wilderness of Judea, away from the sanctuary of the Lord. But David was still able uh, to have fellowship with God. House of the Lord in verse 4 is a reference not to a building, but to a tent because the temple had not yet been built. And verse 5 boldly claims that even in the tent of the Lord, there is safety, sustenance, and support. For in the tradition of the ancient Near East, when you entered a person's tent, the host was personally responsible for your protection and provision. That, that flimsy tent became a fortress. This is why David opens his praise with an unequivocal statement of trust in God and no fear of his enemies. This is not the language of vain presumption, not the boast of utterance of affected boldness. This is the confident yet humble cry of Christian assurance. In spite of the fact that we yet sin every day, and in spite of the fact that we serve a sin-hating God, we yet have no reason to fear because our relationship with Jesus Christ puts us in continuous fellowship with God the Father. So long as the love of God dwells in us, there is no room for fear. For perfect love casts out fear. Have I got a witness? When David brags about his strength, he's really confessing his weakness and acknowledging that in his weakness, God's strength was manifested as perfect. David had enemies, just like you and I have enemies. For if we are a friend to God, that puts us at odds with Satan and his imps. And please don't get discouraged if when we do regather in person for worship, don't, don't get discouraged if the church isn't packed out. For, for few were here before we stopped gathering, yet the bars were full, racetracks were crowded, sports arenas were packed, and I really believe when the threat of COVID is over, we're going to see more of the same. Not, not much will have changed. The faithful will still be faithful, and not many of the disinterested in God will have changed their mind. Isn't it strange that the devil's dens have much longer hours of operation than churches of God? One hour of church brings about restlessness, but places of pleasure can hold us for several hours and we'll leave marveling at how quickly the time seemed to pass. David had a made-up mind. His singular desire was to dwell in the house of the Lord, to inquire, to learn in the temple. How I pray for more folk to fall in love with God and less in love with the things of the world. One thing I regret as I travel on is simply that I stayed a sinner too long. That's why the wisdom writer told us in Ecclesiastes 12 and 1, remember now thy creator in the days of your youth while the evil days come not, nor the years draw near when you will say I have no pleasure in them. David speaks of his desire to behold the beauty of the Lord. Help me, Lord. In the New Testament, the word beauty or beautiful is only used one time. That's in reference to the gate beautiful. But the Old Testament presents this word many times in various forms 
in reference to things and qualities and actions and people. This is a glaring difference between the Old Testament and the New Testament. The former teaching the benefits of religion in regard to time. The latter teaching in regard to eternity. The Old Testament seems to bring harmony into uh, humanity into harmony with natural laws, but the New Testament with those which are spiritual. Humanity's first ideas of beauty are physical, and in such beauty, there is real pleasure, at least for those who possess it and those who admire it. But the idea of beauty really means much more when it's applied to moral qualities. And of these, the earliest which was thought beautiful was courage, the power to do and endure. Then came self-sacrifice, especially as exemplified in a mother's love. The love of lovers, the commingling of two hearts, is a beautiful thing. But to perceive spiritual beauty, you must possess it. One of the evidences of inspiration is its admiration of moral beauty, which is the high praise the Bible gives to goodness. This beauty cannot be faked, it cannot be pretended, it cannot be copied. This world has seemingly grown cold, callous, and uncaring. Random acts of kindness intrigue us when they really should be the norm. Perhaps all of us have known that inner peace and joy that comes from being kind to someone who needed a word of encouragement, push in the right direction, or a silent companion as they walk through a dark time. This is our time to learn like David, that when we cannot gather in the temple of God, we can yet find our way to the throne of grace through prayer. Listen, when you pray, don't say what you don't believe. For according to Psalm 145, 16, when God opens his hand, he satisfies the desire of every living thing. But it is only the shining of God's face, that is his presence, that will satisfy the desire of our soul. So says Psalm 4. God is calling us in this turbulent time to be a voice of reason. It is a call that can be difficult to hear, for this world is no silent glen or lonely mountainside, but rather a babble of confused noises where truth is questioned and known facts are blatantly denied. We must be, as Mary at the Master's feet in the house of Lazarus, calm and contemplative, storing up for dark days ahead, and yet have Martha's sense of urgency to prepare for the Savior's return. There's a time to be still, but also a time to share what we've learned. God issues a call. Seek ye my face. It is up to us to respond. Four little words in the call that is extended not just to David, but to every human being. The entire Bible is wrapped up in these four monosyllabic words. But like the point of an arrow, they strike the mark capable of piercing through the damning quality of sin and saving to the utmost. There's no vagueness here, no ambiguity, no uncertainty. What condescension, what benignity, what loving kindness. The holy, true, and loving God is reaching out to us while we are dead in trespasses and sinned. God is so good that he disregards the icy cold barriers of heartless indifference built by our love for things of this world. 
This separation, a wall that is almost impregnable, is the fruitful cause of all misery and destitution. For there is no hell of woe that can give greater to human spirits than the consciousness of their apostasy from God. Still, God makes gracious overtures, sends tender and sympathetic messages rich in mercy and pregnant in the promise and potency of a pure and vigorously rewarding spiritual life. David said uh, in response, thy face, Lord, uh, will I seek. That must be our response. Personal submission puts our hearts into a right condition to receive divine grace. Personal faith brings our heart the saving and sanctifying influence of the Spirit. And personal love to the Divine Father is the only guarantee that our peace is made with Him. This is David's report on the call he heard and the response he made. Each of us must do as David did. God summons us by the providences and events of our ever-changing lives, our poignant sorrows, our transient joys, call us to the only one in whom the sorrows can be soothed and the joys can be made full and complete. Our duties by their heaviness make us turn to God for strength to discharge our daily tasks. But most of all, God summons us to himself by the one who is the angel of his face. It's up to us to take this general invitation and make it our own. God summons all as he summons each. We must be earnestly dedicated in our seeking. A language seeker will not find but an earnest seeker will not fail. So please don't miss the fact that David replies with his heart, not with his lips. Lips lie, hearts never. We do not need a long and painful search as for something lost in dim darkness. We need only to come out of the darkness <clears throat> for which we obviously have an affinity and acknowledge the presence of God that is all around us. Our response to God's invitation must follow as thunder follows lightning. The first notes of God's divine voice are much more persuasive as they break the silence of separation from a God who has sustained until he could bless us as he chooses. He extends his mercy, but we have to claim it. He issues his commands, but we have to make them guides for our life. Have I got a witness? So let me go back to where I started. Is God really good all the time? That is a question exemplified by verse 10. When my father and my mother forsake me, then the Lord will uh, take me up. Help me, Holy Ghost. This is a, a divine comparative that juxtaposes good that is perishable against good that is immutable. We have no biblical evidence that David's parents ever forsook him. We are assured, however, that they one day had to die and thus left David by force if not by choice. Consider that grim reality in contrast to God's promise never to leave us or forsake us. Many of us have watched our parents get sick and die. Our hope and prayer is we will see them again well and whole in heaven. But until then, rest in knowing that God is alive and well. He does not grow weary. He is not in danger of succumbing 
to COVID-19. God is COVID-proof, cancer-proof, and immune to everything else we humans are subject to. His companionship is forever ours if we abide in him. Have I got a witness? In verse 13 is David's statement of his unwavering confidence in God. Tell us, David, is God really good all the time? You've been through the storm and the rain. You're well acquainted with heartaches and pain. The king you served tried to kill you 21 times. The son you loved sought to take the throne from you. You've buried a child. Your enemies have been numerous. But yet you declare in verse 13 that what got you through is you believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. The sentence is a broken one uttered under strong emotion, suggesting possibilities, but leaving the hearer to supply them for ourselves. Incidentally, the first three words of this verse, which if you'll notice in your Bible is probably in italics, because they do not appear in the original text. Remember that all scribes are expansionists, and someone added these words to give clarity to David's thought. But for David, it was plain enough because he thought about what he'd been through. He reflected on what could have happened. He considered now how things could have turned out differently. And taking no credit for himself, he cries from his heart, unless I had believed to see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. When the king I served faithfully turned on me, my faith in God's goodness held me. When I lost my son in childbirth, God kept me from losing my mind. When my grown son got too grown to respect me, God kept me from disowning him. When I could not keep myself, when I should have lost it all, I focused not on my circumstances, but on the unchanging goodness of God in my circumstances. And that's what got me through. David said, please don't miss the fact that God's goodness was magnified and manifested, not as pie in the sky when we die, but in the land of the living, sound on the ground while we're still around. Ain't God all right? Well, good evening now, uh, but as long as we're in the world, uh, we've got to battle adverse situations, uh, and sometimes we can't even see the enemy. <clears throat> but if we look real close and look with our heart and not our eyes, we'll yet see the goodness of the Lord. Uh, have I got a witness for every evil? Uh, God provides an antidote for a world of trouble. Uh, we've got divine comfort uh, for painful discipline. God's got a divine purpose. And for all the world's sin, God's given us a savior. His name is Jesus. He was born of a virgin, uh, raised in obscurity. Uh, Died for your sins and mine, uh, buried in a borrowed tomb. Uh, but early on the third morning, uh, got up from the grave. Uh, I'm his, and he's shown sure up mine. Uh, anguish, suffering, and sorrow uh, are not prevailing notes uh, in the music of our lives. Uh, Hang on in there, saints. Uh, there's a better day ahead. Uh, not in heaven only, uh, but right here in the land of the living. Uh, COVID-19 uh, is a calamity. Uh, but remember, uh, 
by the very definition, uh, calamities are exceptions. Uh, they're not the rule. Uh, don't you give up. Uh, hang on in there uh, through internal conflict uh, and external battles. Uh, keep your head up. <coughs> Focus on the cross uh, and the goodness of God. Uh, ain't God all right? Uh, his light shines uh, in every dark hour. Uh, his salvation uh, is good for the world. Uh, his strength uh, keeps me when I'm weak. Uh, am I by myself? Uh, is there anybody out there uh, know that the Lord is uh, all that you need? Uh, won't he walk with you? Uh, won't he talk with you? Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, ain't he all right? Uh, say yeah. Say yeah. I feel right. Uh, I feel my help. Uh, I know I got somebody to fight my battle. Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Won't he do it? Yeah! I know he's good. And he's good all the time. Amen? Don't let circumstances change your confidence in God. I know we, we wearing masks, but can I help you? God ain't wearing no mask. He, he, he not social distancing. He's still up close and personal. Now, I, I, I didn't see that on the news this morning, but I talked to God myself. He told me I didn't have to stay six feet away. He said he'd take me in my arms when trouble comes. He'll breathe on me and everything will be all right. God is good, really good all the time. God bless your hearts today. I pray that you will receive this message even as David received and responded to it. And this is your chance to respond. God said, seek ye my face. Four words. Four single syllable words. And the whole gospel is wrapped up in those four words. What's going to be your response today? Will you respond like David? Thy face, Lord, will I seek. I know you want what's in his hand, but do you really want the presence of God? If that's your desire today, you can have that and everything that comes with it. All you have to do is ask God to forgive you of your sins, accept his son Jesus, and he'll come into your heart. Believe that Jesus died for your sins, that God raised him from the dead, that he's alive now forevermore. If you'll pray that prayer, if you'll believe in your heart, if you'll confess with your mouth, there's a number on your television screen right now. In fact, is there are three that you can call. We've got some Christian Life Witness counselors waiting to talk to you. And listen, you, you can join Bracktown, but you have to be born into the kingdom. And that's what we're really after. If you get in the kingdom, we're not going to worry about what church you go to down here. If you're born into the kingdom through the Spirit of God, you'll be safe and sealed forevermore. Let's pray this prayer together. God, we receive your word today. We will not be shaken by circumstances around us. We will be held true by you who abides within us. For God, we know that you're bigger than COVID-19. You're bigger than cancer. You're bigger than death. You've taken the sting out of death for every believer. 
And God, we accept this word today. And we say boldly to the world, I don't know how it looks from your perspective, but from where I stand, God is really good all the time. Even with tears in my eyes, God is still good. With my heart broken in pieces, God is still good. Standing on burial ground, saying goodbye to loved ones, God is still good. We say this not just with our lips, but with our heart. Bless today, God, all who have heard this word. Change hearts. Change lives. Deal with your leaders, God, as only you can. And God will give you the praise, for we would have fainted a long time ago if we had not believed to see the goodness of the Lord right here in the land of the living. We pray this prayer in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. And thank God. God bless you. God keep you. We want you to stay home. We want you to stay healthy. And when you go outside that door, Put your mask on. Protect yourself and others. We'll see you again on Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. God bless you. Remember that God loves you, and so does Pastor Akins.